Let's have a look at how to plot compass bearings. If you're going to be travelling across any expanse of water where the possibility of uh, rain or fog or darkness might impede your visibility, then you might be relying on a compass to get from point A to point B. So let's go through and see how it's done so you'll have no worries when you're out there. So we'll have a look first at charts which have a, a compass rose with the inner magnetic bearing inside the compass rose and then we'll have a look at charts which just have true bearings listed and we'll have a look and see how to convert true to magnetic bearings. Okay, we're going to have a look at plotting a bearing using a chart with magnetic bearings in its compass rows. Knowing your start point and knowing your end point, for example, let's just say we wanted to get to this spot over here, we're going to start from there, we want to end up over there. Imagine it was raining and we couldn't see where we had to end up. This is the reason you'd plot a compass bearing. The gadget we're going to use to do this, and I'll show you how to do it without a gadget, this thing here is called a roller ruler, and it's simply a matter of you start the thing at your start point, you line it up on your end points, it's a straight edge. So we want to start over there, we want to end up here, and it's simply a matter then, that's the angle that we want to, or that's the, the bearing that we want to follow in our boat. So all we do is roll up this ruler to this compass rose. All charts will have at least one compass rose on them. And the compass rose, it's a 360 degree circle with bearings around it. So all we do is just roll this thing up it's still the parallel angle, no matter where we roll this on a chart, the angle is exactly the same. So all we do is we roll it up, we cut over the centre of the circle of the compass rose, cut out the very centre. We're heading in this direction, so we read off to this side. The number that it says here is 280 degrees magnetic. And that's all there is to it. We've just plotted a compass bearing. So let's just do that again. There's our start point. There's our end point. So we put this ruler across those two points, roll it up. Cross over the very centre of the circle, just put our finger out here, 280 degrees. That's all there is to plotting a compass bearing. So once you've worked out a bearing off a chart, to drive to that bearing, you simply turn the wheel until the bearing you're after is centred on the line of your compass, or in the middle of your compass is a viewing eye. Let's do a few more examples. If we wanted to go from this point here over to that point over there in bad visibility and we couldn't see the way, again, we line up our roller ruler on the start point and also on the end point. Move it across a little bit so it'll connect across to our compass rose. It's just simply a matter of then is just rolling it down. Now here we've got a problem. It doesn't exactly, it crosses the centre of the circle, but it doesn't reach enough over the other side. If you happen to have two of these things, what you can do is connect them, or if you've, you can use a book, any straight edge, just to roll that across. It now connects across to the other side. We just cross over the centre of the circle, read out on the magnetic uh, red bearing there, 67 degrees. There you go, 67 degrees magnetic. Let's do another example. We saw the blue lines drawn on the chart uh, when we were looking at navigation earlier, and I mentioned that those blue lines had the magnetic compass bearings on them. So this one here, it's 214 degrees magnetic, and we'll slide that across to our compass rose and read down and see what the magnetic bearing is. 214 degrees magnetic. That's good enough for me. Now, a more traditional way to plot a compass bearing is to use a set of parallel rulers. Well, let's have a look at that and see how it's done. Now with a set of parallel rulers, they don't roll across a chart as the roller ruler does. With these parallel rulers, we walk across a chart. So for example, if we want to plot a bearing from that point to that point there, we simply walk these things down to our compass rows, and they can go in a number of ways. And the angle that we are achieving here is a parallel angle from where we started. So it's just, these are two rulers joined together with hinges, so the angle that we now have as we cross the centre of the compass rows is exactly the same angle that we started with up there. So we simply use these as a mechanism to transfer that angle down to the centre of the circle rather than using a roller ruler to roll it down. So these things walk across a chart, maintaining a parallel angle, whereas a roller ruler rolls across a chart, maintaining a parallel angle. Now a little bit of practicality here. If you find yourself out in a boat, the weather's coming bad and you can't see where you've got to go to get home, and you don't have any gadgets such as a roller ruler or a parallel ruler, then what you can do is uh, use the next best thing, and that's, that's your hand or your forearm. So for example, if we wanted to go from, or just say we're sitting over here and we wanted to get down to this point here, just form a straight edge with the palm of your hand, and as well as you can, just roll that across to the centre of your compass rose, and read down the, the numbers, and do that a couple of times, just to get an average, whichever number comes up most. That's the bearing you'll follow, and that'll get you near enough, it's good enough to home. You'll notice on this compass rose that we have an outer black circle and an inner red circle. The 
black numbers are what are known as true numbers and the red numbers are what are known as magnetic numbers or magnetic bearings. The idea of it is this. The black numbers or your true bearings, in other words, are lined up on the north and south pole. So zero degrees true is pointing at the north pole. 180 degrees true is pointing at the south pole. That's all very well and good. But the compass on your boat doesn't point to the north pole. It points to the place on the Earth where the Earth's magnetic field is the strongest. And that's because your compass is a magnetic compass. Now, the Earth's magnetic field is strongest near Canada. And so your compass, when it's pointing at zero, zero degrees, it's actually pointing towards Canada. It's not pointing towards the North Pole. And the difference between true north and magnetic north is what's known as magnetic variation. And on a compass rose, the variation must always be told to you. On this particular compass rose here, the mean or the average, it says here, the mean or the average variation is 10 degrees 48 minutes to the east, and that was taken back in 1994, and that's increasing one minute annually. Now the idea of it is there's 360 degrees to a circle, and each degree can be broken down into 60 minutes. Now you'd never worry about working with minutes in a small boat because the reality is that every wave is going to knock your boat around by at least a few degrees, and sometimes up to as many as 10 degrees. So let's ignore minutes, and we'll just focus on the degrees. So the idea of it is this, the mean or the average variation is 10 degrees off to the east, what they've done is they've put in this inner red circle and they've skewed it off 10 degrees to the east. You'll notice there that there's a, a red line starting from the centre of the circle, heading up through zero degrees magnetic, but if you follow the line up, you'll see that it actually connects up at 10 degrees, 48 minutes on the true numbers. So they've actually put in an inner red circle and they've skewed that circle off to the east, which means that for recreational boaties, which have this uh, facility on a chart, you can ignore the black numbers because your compass doesn't use those numbers and all you need to remember to do is use the red numbers, so it makes it very easy. Let's do a little calculation here. Imagine using an admiralty chart and you don't have the facility of an inner red bearing circle. You'd have to do a small calculation because your compass uses magnetic bearings, it doesn't use these true bearings. So you've got to do a calculation to convert these true bearings back to magnetic bearings. We'll use this as a little example here. On this chart here, this is the chart we've been looking at. The variation is 10 degrees off to the east. We won't worry about minutes, so it's 10 degrees off, off to the east. Now, let's just have a think about this. If we didn't have this inner red circle, and for example, the bearing that we wanted to follow was 200 degrees true, what would that be in magnetic bearings? The chart says we're 10 degrees off to the east. You can see there at zero degrees magnetic, it's 10 degrees true, which means at 200 degrees true, it'd be 190 degrees magnetic. Because if true is 10 degrees and magnetic is zero, it means we're plus 10 degrees on the true side. So if, you, if, the, bearing, if the true bearing that you've worked out on a chart is 200 degrees, then to convert that to magnetic, we would subtract 10 degrees and it would make it 190 degrees magnetic. The reason for that is that the variation is off to the east. So whenever a variation is off to the east, we always subtract whatever the variation is to convert back to magnetic bearings. Here's another example of a chart around the uh, South Australia area. You can see there that the variation is different. Seven degrees, 45 minutes off to the east close enough to eight degrees. So again, if we worked out on a chart, the true bearing was 100 degrees. To convert that to magnetic, we subtract, subtract, just round it up, subtract uh, eight degrees, which would knock that back to 92 degrees magnetic, which would be the bearing we'd follow in our boat's compass. Now it needs to also be pointed out that the variation will change depending on where you are in the world. And a chart of that area will show you what the variation is. Now the reason for this is quite simple. Let's just draw up a little mud map of Australia here. So imagine that's Australia. When our compass is pointing at magnetic north, it's pointing at Canada, which is up there. It's not pointing at the North Pole, which is over there. And that's where your 11 degrees or 10 degrees or whatever the variation might be. In that example, we just saw uh, around Adelaide area, when the compass of somebody down there is pointing at magnetic north, it's pointing towards Canada, it's not pointing at the North Pole and the variation we just saw was around about uh, 8 degrees. If we had somebody over here in this part of the world, when their compass is pointing towards Canada, it's pointing to there, 
it's not pointing towards the North Pole, so who on earth knows what their variation is? The chart will tell them, but it just goes to show that the variation will change depending on where you are in the world, simply because of uh, angles. You're pointing at magnetic north, you're not pointing at the North Pole, so there's a difference between true magnetic north. In this compass rose here, you can see that the variation is three degrees off to the west. We've been looking at easterly variations. If the variation is off to the west, then we'd add to convert true to magnetic bearings. So for example, if the true bearing was 100 degrees, then the magnetic bearing in this example would be 103 degrees magnetic. Here's a marker that we haven't looked at before. This marker is called the compass adjustment buoy. Now, compass adjustment buoy enables you to check your compass's accuracy. You can see here that there are lines heading off from this adjustment buoy. We've got line one, two, and it goes all the way up to line six. If we have a look over here at our compass adjustment buoy table, the way the table reads, it says line one to the Red Cliff Water Tower, 311 degrees magnetic. Line two to the Bald Hills Radio Mast, 264 degrees magnetic, and so on for the other lines. The idea of it is that you take your boat out to this compass adjustment buoy, you'd point your boat at the landmarks which are mentioned in the table, those landmarks would be conspicuous from that, from that compass adjustment buoy. So you'd point your boat at those landmarks and you'd have a look and see if your compass was reading the same bearing as is given to you here in the table. Now the idea of it is that your compass may not be accurate. Your boat's radio or any other magnetic interference on the boat may introduce some compass error. You can see here that even a small magnet in a mobile phone uh, skews the compass around to a significant amount. So you can imagine what a, uh, a large magnetic force on your boat might have on your compass. So what they've done is they've placed a table on a chart which you can refer to and see if the bearings on your compass, when you're pointing, the, when you're pointing your boat at the buildings and at the conspicuous landmarks which are mentioned in the table, if the bearings on your compass come out the same as the bearings that is given to you on the chart, it means your compass is accurate. If your compass is inaccurate, what you can do is if it's an adjustable compass, you can get out your screwdriver and adjust it. If it's a non-adjustable compass, it means you're always going to have to allow for your compass error in all of your future compass plottings. Okay, that's what's known as compass deviation. The definition of deviation is it's the difference between magnetic north and compass north. So that's it, folks. We've just seen how to plot compass bearings. What I suggest you do is, in the comfort of your own home, work out some bearings off the chart off your local area, and then go out and just drive to those bearings in good visibility so that you can work it out and make sure that you, you know how to do it. And then if you ever need to rely on a compass to get you home in bad visibility, you'll have the confidence that the bearings you've taken are the correct ones.